So this is the brand new Sony ZV-E10. Now I've been using this camera for about three months now and in today's video, I'm gonna tell if you should get this camera now or if you should pass on it. So this is the brand new APS-C line from Sony, which kind of sits between the Sony ZV-1 and the A6400. It's almost like they took these two cameras and smashed them together and created this one. Otherwise, you could think of it as it's a ZV-1 with interchangeable lenses. So comparing these cameras in size, the popular Sony ZV-1 point and shoot and the Sony ZV-E10, they're fairly similar in size. They kind of look the same on the outside. Uh, the only difference being this one has a interchangeable lens. Now, the inside of this camera is still quite a bit different. So one of the biggest difference between the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10 is that the Sony ZV-10 now is using the 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, which is the same sensor you'll see on the A6400. Now comparing the A6400 and the Sony ZV-E10, you'll notice that once again, they're both fairly similar sized. Uh, the A6400 definitely has a slightly bigger grip and it's a little bit chunkier of a camera. So being that both these cameras share the same sensor, they're both using the 6K sensor that's downsampled into a 4K resolution. So that means you're gonna get a really crisp, ultra sharp 4K image with both of these cameras. So looking at the Sony ZV-E10, you'll notice that this camera has a little bit more of a button layout like the Sony ZV-1. So on top here, you'll notice that it has the off on switch, the mode button, your record button, your custom button, which is defaults as the background defocus, and it has a zoom rocker, and that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simplified layout, so you can actually get into the settings that you want very quickly, unlike the A6400 that had a mode dial, which has several different functions, and then also on the back, it has some different functions as far as manual focus, autofocus, AEL. This thing has a lot more functions. That you kind of need to know what you're doing with the camera if you're gonna use. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of the new features, some of the new settings, and kind of just show you what this camera is capable of doing. I'm also gonna show you some of the shots that I shot in 1080 HD as well as in 4K, so you can kind of see the difference between the 1080 and the 4K with this camera. And then by the end of this video, we're gonna answer the big question. Is this a good vlog camera and should I get it? And then also at the very end of the video, I'm gonna tell you what I liked about this camera and what I didn't like about this camera. Okay, so let's talk features with this camera. So right away, the obvious that you'll notice is it has this big windscreen on top, this big fuzzy thing, which actually is kind of a clip that just slides into the cold shoe mount uh, and it covers the, the big capsule microphone on top. So this microphone is brand new to the Sony APS-C line. Uh, it is the same microphone that you'll see on the Sony ZV-1. So it's slightly more front facing. It's a stereo mic and it does a pretty good job of picking up, uh, comparing like the A6400, the internal mic on these cameras were just trash. Like I never would use them because they sounded awful. Uh, now the Sony ZV-E10, this microphone is usable. I, I think once you get it a little ways away from you, it definitely gets a little bit more tinny and it picks up a lot of stuff around it. So one big feature that Sony added to this camera is they actually just made a mode button now instead of a mode dial. Uh, and instead of having about eight different selections, you get three which is now way more simplified for someone who just wants to start recording and start shooting photos. So you can, if you hit the button one time, it brings up your photo menu. If you hit the button a second time, it brings up your video menu. And if you hit the third button, it brings up your S and Q, which stands for slow and quick. Uh, slow and quick is like your uh, quick menu to get slow motion and or like fast motion, like time lapses. I do like this feature because it is pretty simplified and it is very user friendly for someone who's just beginning with this camera. So another new feature you'll see on this camera uh, since the Sony ZV-1 started it, you'll see the dedicated record button. Um, this now has started showing up on the A7S III, A7 IV, the ZV-E10. And I think it's going to be a function that you'll probably see on a lot of the Sony cameras moving forward. Uh, it's nice having that. Uh, one cool thing about the record button, though, is that you can actually also program your shutter button to be a record button. And then you can change your record button to be another custom button. So if you want to switch that record button to something else, that is a cool feature that you can do now as well. So now moving all the way to the right, you'll see a button that says C1, which is by default, the background defocus. Uh, I shot this video earlier on this camera. Let's check that out. So the background defocus button is only really going to work if you're in like an automatic setting, whether it's in like program auto or intelligent video, something for it to be able to adjust all three settings, the ISO, aperture and shutter speed to get you the correct exposure. So right now I'm uh, using the program auto we are set at clear for the background. I'm actually sitting at ISO 4000, which is quite high, uh, considering I had the ISO around 200 earlier in manual settings. 
Uh, I'm not sure what it's doing with the shutter speed. It's actually not telling me a lot of the information on the screen like you would normally see. But when you hit that background defocus, this background should start to get blurry. And there you go. It now dropped down to a 1.4 aperture, which is what this lens is capable of doing. Uh, this is the Sigma 16, by the way. Uh, and now you can see the background is pretty blurry and it's still pretty close behind me, so it's not crazy blurry. This function will probably work a little better when it's in sunlight, uh, but like I said before, it's only really gonna be a functional item if you're using automatic settings on this camera. So one of the last functions that they added to this camera is now it has a zoom rocker dial. So what's really cool about the zoom rocker is that on some of these lenses like the kit lens or the 18 to 105 lens, uh, those are power zoom lenses. So now you can control those lenses from the camera itself. Or if you're using prime lenses, you can turn this camera into a setting called clear image zoom, which will add another 1.5 crop on top. Uh, and then you can use that also to zoom in and out using like a prime lens. So that brings us to the last feature and probably most important upgrade Sony did to this camera, and that is the flip out fully articulating screen. Uh, this is a pretty big game changer in Sony. Now you can have a screen that you can see and still have a mic on top. This is a huge upgrade from the a6400, which was just a flip up screen. But then they put the hot shoe right on top so that if you had a microphone, you had to get some sort of bracket that would move the mic to the side. And it was just never great for having a lot of the viewing angles. So one other cool thing with this articulating screen is that you can move this all around in different positions. You can get some cool vertical shots while still looking down at the screen, which is something you really couldn't do with this camera unless you were like laying on the ground with it. So who is this camera for? So now knowing the differences between the ZV-1 and the A6400, I kind of think that Sony wanted to make a camera that was really popular with like vlogging and content creators, as well as something that was just really simple to use. Because not everyone really knows how to control every setting manually on a camera. They wanted to make a camera that was just super simplified to use. And that's exactly what they did with this camera. And what makes this thing have the potential to be a good vlog camera is that it's really light, it's small, it's compact. You have a decent onboard microphone, so you can kind of just bring this camera everywhere, just like the Sony ZV-1. So then what Sony did is they took the point and shoot mentality in the ZV-1 and they made it so that you can put interchangeable lenses on this camera. So then you can get different looks out of your camera. You can get different lighting situations out of your camera. So this is definitely a beginner camera in the interchangeable lens category. So let's talk image quality. Now the image quality on this camera is just like all the other A6400, A6500, A6600. Uh, and that's a really good high res 4K image. Like I said before, it is a 6K sensor down sampled into a 4K. So you're gonna get ultra sharp, ultra crisp shots. Now, for those of you who watch my channel, you'll notice that most of the time I'm actually using the A6400 for my talking head shots because of how sharp and how good looking that image is. So in this camera, you can also shoot in 1080 HD, which is a little softer looking. It's not quite as sharp because you are kind of going from a 6K now down to a 1080. Uh, so 1080 is very usable on this camera if you're not wanting to shoot in 4K with the larger file sizes. Uh, but personally, I would pretty much only ever shoot 4K on this camera myself. Now here's a bunch of shots that I shot in 4K and then I'll show you some of the shots that I shot in 1080.
Okay, so now when you're jumping into slow motion on this camera, this camera in 60 frames a second or 120 frames per second uh, is only going to be available in HD settings. Uh, and as well as if you go into S and Q mode, all your slow motion and time lapses are only going to be available in 1080 HD. So now in S and Q, if you go to time lapses and go into like a one frame per second, you're going to get shots that look like this. So one thing you'll notice here is that it definitely looks like it's 1080. It's a little softer. It's a tiny bit noisier because it was a slightly darker out at this time of night. Now shooting in slow motion, whether you're in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, these are going to be both in 1080 HD as well. Uh, one thing that I did kind of notice that if you shoot in 60 frames per second, the touch tracking still actually works. So what that means is that you can touch the object that you're filming on the back of the screen and then it'll track that object and keep it in focus while you're shooting in 60 frames per second. Now, the one thing I'd found is that in 120 frames per second, the touch tracking goes away and it only goes to a touch focus which doesn't do quite as good of a job. Uh, it, it can lock into focus, but you can also kind of lose focus here and there. So let's talk about vlogging with this camera. This camera is being marketed as a vlogging camera. So is it any good as a vlogging camera? So before we get too far into this topic, let's first talk about the kit lens, which is available with this camera. So this lens at the widest is a 16 millimeter lens, which is about a 24 millimeter equivalent, which is just wide enough to be a decent vlog lens. So this lens is a stabilized lens, which means and you go to the menu, you have uh, choices between standard and active stabilization. Now standard stabilization on this camera only applies to lenses that are stabilized because this camera does not have IBIS or stabilization other than the active stabilization. So when I was vlogging with this lens here, you can see that the 16 was just wide enough to get me in the frame, get some background in there. That 3.5 aperture was getting a little bit of a blurry background. And this lens does a pretty good job of keeping things stable, uh, having that standard stabilization turned on. Uh, but when I turn it to active stabilization, uh, the digital crop on this is quite immense. It's like a 40% crop. So you'll see at this point, now that 16 millimeter lens doesn't look great. It's way too zoomed in. Um, if you had like a long selfie stick, you could probably get that a little further away. But on the kit lens, I would probably actually only vlog with standard stabilization and use that active stabilization for other handheld shots not pointing at yourself. Okay, so now let's talk about my favorite vlogging lens on this camera, and that is the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Uh, this lens is not cheap. It's about as much as the camera itself. Uh, you've probably noticed a lot of the reviewers that are reviewing this camera are using this 10 to 18. Uh, at first, I had a really big problem with other people showcasing this camera with this lens, because I think it's not really a fair comparison of how most people are gonna use this lens. But after using this lens now, I'm gonna say that this is my favorite lens for this camera if you're pointing it at yourself. Um, this 10 millimeter range is incredibly wide for this camera and you're gonna get yourself and most of the background in the image and it looks really good. Uh, this is a stabilized lens, which means that standard stabilization function inside of the camera will work with this so you can turn it to that. So if you look at this shot right here, uh, I have it set to 10 millimeters and it's in standard stabilization. So just walking around, you'll see that it's still a pretty stable lens. I'm getting quite a bit of the background in the shot and it's an overall pretty good image. So if you watch my last vlog where I went to Ikea with the Sony ZV-E10, you'll notice that I was using the 10 to 18 millimeter on that one as well. So if you wanna see more examples of this lens, go check that up up here. So now let's see what this lens looks like in active stabilization. So now if we look at the shot right here, I'm in the 10 millimeters in active stabilization. So now you have the ability to walk around in active stabilization and still kind of have that 16 millimeter look, which is gonna be pretty optimal for walking and vlogging with this camera. So if your main priority with this camera is walking around and vlogging, I would highly recommend looking at the 10 to 18 millimeter lens and picking this up at some point. So if you're gonna be using active stabilization with this camera, I would probably recommend only using that when you're pointing the camera at other people or objects or shooting B-roll. Uh, you will get some really good stable shots with that. Um, like I said before though, just zooming, it zooms in too much when you're trying to vlog, unless you're using this like 10 to 18 millimeter lens. So I would reserve the active stabilization for shooting other people and objects. So Sony sells this camera in two different ways. They sell it as a body only and one with a kit lens. Uh, now I would probably actually recommend skipping the kit lens and investing your money into some better lenses. So there's three lenses for this camera that I would highly recommend getting if you're wanting to upgrade. And that is the 10 to 18 millimeter lens if you do a lot of vlogging or if you need to have a lot of shots like interior shots where you need the widest possible lens that you can get. The 10 to 18 is a great lens for that. It is expensive, like I said before. So the next lens is the Sigma 16 lens. This is probably one of the most popular lenses on this camera. It's a 16 millimeter wide angle lens. It's a 1.4 aperture lens, which means you're gonna get some crazy blurry background. 
and it's going to be outstanding at nighttime. This is a very good low light lens for this camera. The only downside to this lens is it's not a stabilized lens. So if you're walking around, it's going to be a little shaky and wobbly. So you just have to be very careful how you use this lens uh, to get the best image. So the third lens I'm going to recommend for this camera is the Sony 18 to 105 zoom lens. Uh, this is a outstanding lens for video. I do have another video solely on this lens for the APS-C line. If you want to watch that, click the link up here. Uh, but this one is one of my favorite lenses for the APS-C line. It pretty much lived on my A6400 all the time. It's going to be a pretty wide angle lens at an 18 millimeter, and it's going to give you a huge zoom all the way at 105. So this is a very versatile lens. Uh, it's not great in low light because it's an F4, uh, but there's something about this lens that just has a very good look and it's stabilized, so it's going to pair really well with this camera. Then one other thing I would recommend is getting some kind of handheld tripod that has like maybe even an extension to it for this camera. That way you can vlog with this a little bit easier and have a little bit stretch from you. This is the Ulanzi MT47. Uh, they do have a less heavy duty version of this called the MT16, which is about half the price as well. And then one of the last things I would recommend getting on this camera is something like the Rode Video Micro. Uh, it's just gonna be a little tiny microphone that sits on top. It's going to improve your audio quite a bit over the stock internal mic. All right, so how does this camera compare to the ZV-1 as far as image quality? So in this next clip I'm about to show you, I put both these cameras side by side and I did kind of a vlogging test, uh, both with the kit lens and just the built-in lens on this camera. This is what those two images look like. Okay, so we're shooting on the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10. Uh, both of these are in standard stabilization. Neither of them are in active. Uh, let's just do a little walking around and kind of see what this looks like. But this is a good side-to-side -side comparison between these two, since these are probably the two most similar cameras, being the ZV-E10 is just kind of the ZV-1 with lens attachments. All right, so now we have both cameras in active stabilization. Uh, you can see how much the ZV-E10 just cropped in. It's about 40%, making it kind of almost unusable as a vlog camera, I think, in my opinion, in active stabilization. So big win there for the ZV-1. So I was going to do a comparison between the ZV-E10 and the A6400. Uh, unfortunately, I only had one of the same lens, so I couldn't do a side-by-side -side of those. But realistically, they use the same sensor, and they're going to look pretty much exactly the same. So let's talk about photography with the ZV-E10. So this camera has the 24-megapixel sensor, which means you're going to get some pretty good-looking images with this camera. Uh, a lot of this is going to depend on the lenses you use. Uh, the kit lens itself is probably not the greatest lens for photography. But this camera does have the ability to shoot some pretty high-quality images. Uh, I haven't shot a lot of photography yet with this specific camera, but like the A6400, I've been using this camera for about three years and I've been shooting lots of photography with this camera. So I know what the sensor does and I know what this camera was capable of. Uh, and if you have the right lens on this camera, it's you're going to get some really great images for photography. So while I was out hiking on the trail, I did take a few pictures. I'll showcase those here. So let's talk about the things I like about this camera. Uh, first off, what I really like about this camera is it's small, it's lightweight, and it's compact. That's what makes a good vlog camera a good vlog camera. It has to be easy to use as well as have a decent image, and this one definitely checks off both of those boxes. In fact, this thing's so small and compact, I actually did a shot the other day in my vlog where I attached this to my steering wheel with a little magic arm just to showcase that you could put this in a lot of tight, small places and get the shot that you want. Another thing I like about this camera, because it's lightweight, you don't get fatigued all day long from vlogging. Uh, when I'm vlogging on the A7S III, which we're shooting on now, that's a really heavy setup, especially with that Sigma 2470. So you can really only vlog for a couple minutes and then you're shaking your arm off because it's heavy to hold. This camera weighs almost nothing. And depending on the lens you use, this thing is gonna be a very easy camera to use vlogging because it almost weighs the same amount as the Sony ZV-1. I do like the simplified mode button on top where it goes from photo video to slow and quick. I do like how easy the slow and quick mode setup is where you can go from one frame per second to 120 frames a second with just like one button. I really do like the zoom rocker, especially when you're using lenses like that 18 to 105. So you kind of have more control over the zoom using a dial instead. So one of my favorite things on this camera, it's very similar to the a7S III. When you flip open the screen and hit record, you get a red box that goes around the screen. I've had so many times where I've filmed something and then realized I didn't hit record because there wasn't an indicator that was really that great other than the tiny record logo at the bottom of the screen. 
Uh, this thing has the red frame that goes around the outside, as well as it has a red tally light that comes on uh, on the side, which currently I have turned off. Um, that is a huge game changer for me. One of the other things I like about this camera is they actually added an audio jack on the side so you can kind of monitor how your microphone levels are. And then one big upgrade that Sony did is they actually changed the micro USB into a USB-C, which is just a better option for this camera. And I believe you can use that to actually charge the camera while using it as well. So now because no camera is perfect, let me talk about the things that I don't like about this camera. So first and foremost, the one thing that I really dislike about this camera is the shutter roll. Now, because they borrowed the sensor from the a6400 and the a6600, this camera had a really bad problem with shutter roll, and this one is no different. Uh, so shutter roll is that if you're moving side to side, you're going to get this weird, jello-y, warpy looking shot. Uh, so basically, any fast movements with this camera, it's going to get really bad shutter roll. So here's a shot I shot in the studio earlier today. Uh, just shows you how kind of warpy and how wobbly this footage can be with this sensor. Now here's the kicker. If you put this thing into active stabilization, it kind of amplifies how bad the shutter roll is. So in this shot, you'll see here, I put it in active stabilization and it looks way worse. So that's one thing I've always hated about this camera as well as the shutter roll. So after using the camera for a while, it's something you will get used to and it's something that you will learn how to control without getting bad shutter roll. So by contrast, the Sony ZV-1 is actually a really good camera with shutter roll. Uh, this thing is pretty steady. It doesn't really get much at all. And the active stabilization on this camera also only crops in like 10, 20%. So it's actually going to be a better, I think a better option for vlogging as long as you don't need to change lenses. So one thing that I kind of disliked about this camera is that I actually like having more control over the camera. I like having more buttons and more settings so that you can easily quickly get the shot you want. This camera is set up more for beginners. So it does have a little less control with manual settings. Uh, not that you can't do them and they're just, you have to go through different menus to find them. Versus something like the a6400, you can like hit a button to switch it to manual focus. You can flip it down, hit a button again, you can switch it to control your white balance. This thing just has more functionality and more control for someone who wants to use the settings. This camera is more turn it on, point and shoot. So one thing that I would like to change about this camera is the grip. Uh, the grip on this thing is kind of shallow. It's not really great. It's not ergonomic. Uh, and it's not anything like the a6400, which kind of has some contours in the grip. It's one thing that I kind of disliked about carrying this camera around was just the grip just doesn't feel that great. Now you probably will be holding this camera on things like tripods more often if you're vlogging, but having some of those bigger lenses like the 18 to 105 made this grip just kind of hard to hold the camera. So Sony recently started making their cameras be able to shoot vertical video. So one thing I found out about this is if you actually start hitting record with your camera, not horizontal, it'll default to recording in a vertical mode. And then when you bring all your shots in and post, they'll all be vertical. So when I did my last vlog, I actually had a lot of clips that came into my timeline as vertical video. And then I had to bring them in, rotate them. I had to expand each one of the clips about 140% because the clip actually was not the full resolution of the 4K. So it does kind of degrade your shot when you have to do that. Uh, and I wish there was a function in this camera where you could turn it off. All right, so now let's get to the big question. Is this a good vlog camera? And is it a good camera for filmmaking? And the answer to that is absolutely. This is a great vlog camera, um, especially for the price that you're paying for this thing. You're literally getting a camera with the sensor of the a6600 at half the price. And it's still cheaper than the a6400. And this thing has way more functions than this does. So for the price that you're paying for this camera, 100% yes. So you're getting a lightweight, compact 4K camera with a flip screen and an external mic output. This thing is a perfect camera for vlogging. And it's going to be a great camera for filmmaking because you can change the lenses on this thing and you can get the look that you want. You can get low light capabilities. This is just going to be an all around great camera to have, especially if you're vlogging or traveling or just trying to make little film projects. So I know I'm going to get this question a lot in this video is that should I get the Sony ZV-E10 or should I get the Sony ZV-1? And my answer is going to be completely depends on how you want to use this camera. Now, if you just want to put a camera in your pocket and literally go anywhere, Sony ZV-1 is going to be the answer for you. This still has a lot of the same features that this one does. It's still going to have a great image just like this camera, but this camera having internal lens is really compact and you can just throw this in your pocket and go wherever you want. Now, if you want to have a camera that has the option to change lenses between wide angle lenses and zoom lenses, then this is going to be the camera for you. Both are going to be great for vlogging. Both are going to be great for filmmaking. This one's just going to be a whole lot more compact and more discreet. 
All right, so if you have any questions on the Sony ZV E10 or the Sony ZV1, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And go check out my description below for all the other lenses and stuff that I was using with this camera. And if this video has been helpful, please hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you want to follow along with other gear reviews and film tutorials. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Later. Thank you.